Welcome to Discovering. When I think back about high school, I think about English and algebra and history. We'll take a look at a one-of-a-kind class that focuses on the outdoors. If you love the area that you're living in, especially this beautiful UP country, you're going to start protecting it and you're going to start educating people about how you should treat it. Stick around, that's all tonight right here on Discovering. The secret streams that flow beneath the cliffs of colored stone. Forest thick and healthy with birch and pine and oak. Surrounded by the greatest lakes this world has ever known. The black bear's awesome presence as he roams the hills and fields. Call of the timber wolf, the loon's lonesome trill. The eagle soaring high above, the trout lies deep and still. These are what I treasure, the only way I measure. Feelings that I have for this fine land, there is so much to discover when you're a long-time lover of northern Michigan. In the Upper Peninsula, one of our greatest assets is our natural resources. The trees, the water, the ground beneath our feet. And along with that comes one of our greatest responsibilities, to maintain and manage these treasures for ourselves and for future generations. In order to do this, we need to be educated. We need to understand wildlife and habitats, fish and water systems, as well as the effects our environment has on our resources and vice versa. As years go by, we indeed acquire knowledge on much of this through our own experiences and just by living here in the UP. But what if much of this knowledge was there from the beginning? What if this information was presented to us at a young age, instead of by random experiences through the course of our lives? A push in that direction early on could very well change the path we choose, or at the very least make us much more aware of what we have here and how it's affected by our daily lifestyles. There is a school right here in the Upper Peninsula offering just such an opportunity. Superior Central High School offers a natural resources class as well as a boat building class. I met with science and art teacher Tim Bliss along with his students to find out more. Last year, a grant became available, a principal let me know about, and we got the grant and we went ahead with this idea of having two classes, a natural resources class and a watercraft design class. The kids learn about environmental science issues, a lot of water quality, soils health, uh, invasive species, and we also look at the history of traditional boats uh, around the world, and we do research projects on those. Eventually, we get into building scale models that are identical to the boats that they build. They paint them up the way they want their final boat to go. And usually about mid-November, when the winter starts to set in and we need to spend more time inside, we start working on boats. Uh, we start with the frames and every kid helps everybody build their boat. The frames start first. They don't even know whose frame they're building. Every boat has three frames that the the plywood planks are wrapped around in the end. When the frames are done, each student will choose three of those frames and at that point they're starting to see what their boat's going to be. From there we take them to our building area which is the old performing arts stage in the old gym and working as a team always they start wrapping the pre-cut plywood planks around these boats. Every piece is, is pre-cut for them just to save time and uh, a little bit more ease in assembly. After the planks are wrapped on, we put the bottom on, it's glued on, cut to shape, weighted down with old textbooks, sits there overnight, and the next day you flip it over and it's really starting to look like a boat. They take a lot of ownership in it at that point. They see their boat sitting there and you can kind of start visualizing what it's going to be like when you take it out. Uh, after the boat is sanded and all the corners are rounded off smooth, uh, the real strength and the waterproofing of this boat is with a fiberglass and epoxy system. The entire bottom is covered in six ounce cloth, saturated with epoxy, and every seam has at least two layers of fiberglass covering those to, for strength and for water tightness. They don't leak a drop. We've, I can guarantee that before they even hit the water, they're not going to leak. It's a proven technique and it's, it's relatively easy. <laughs> Thank you.
All the boats are assembled and the gunnels are wrapped on. The students start breaking off in singles and they start Next. painting their boats. A few of the boats are, they wanted to see the wood, so they're, they're varnished. Um, some of the boats, probably about half of them, have some pretty elaborate paint schemes. They usually follow the scale model that they made way back in uh, October of that year. Um, and you know, in, in the UP, you're waiting. You're waiting for spring. And you get antsy, you want to see these things on the water. There's not much you can do about it. So today was the first time any of these boats have seen the water. They all took a trial run in uh, the prototype boat and one of my boats in the fall. We launch them on the school quarry. They paddle around so they kind of know what they're getting into. But other than that, they've never been in one. So the, the smiles and what they say when they hit the water it's it's worth it you know and uh, to spend this time with them out here just paddling around you know of course we've got the science lessons today but later as the sun starts to go down and hopefully this wind dies down a little bit we're going to just take some relaxing paddles launch them paddle up the river here maybe down the shoreline uh, maybe even take a little moonlight paddle if the conditions permit Go up, you want to go up here, baby? Okay, so let me. Alright, stay bow into the wind, paddle hard. Get your paddle center, Cole. The project itself is completely community funded. Uh, the community has been behind me, or us I should say, 100% with this and we've had a lot of support from the school. The, the really, with public funding education, we really don't have the money to do a program like this without the community support. These kids get these boats, a paddle that they make on, on their own, and a brand new life jacket free of charge. Uh, it doesn't. Nothing in this program costs them a dime. Uh, the only stipulation is you, you, you pass the class and when you're done, I'll drop the boat off at your house and it's, it's yours for, for as long as you like. And take care of it and there's no reason it shouldn't last for decades. The idea of this whole thing came from a magazine article that a friend gave me in the early 90s. And it was about Discovery Champlain. And it's a summer program for kids where they learn about science and they each build their own sea kayak and they take a trip on Lake Champlain. And that idea just sort of bounced around the back of my mind since the early 90s. And about nine years ago, I uh, sat down on AutoCAD and designed one of these little P-Rows. And always with the thought that keep it simple, make it something that first time builder, a student, can easily put together and maybe a whole class could build these and they would they'd have their boat, they'd use their boat, they'd take it on um, fishing trips, science trips, just enjoy it for the rest of their lives hopefully.
the natural resources side of this, obviously we, you know, we study the water quality, the soil's health, invasive species. Have you guys ever seen zebra mussel shells on the shores of Lake Michigan? I, I think if you go to any of these uh, boat launches anywhere, you'll probably see a sign that says, you know, don't spread hitchhikers, stop aquatic hitchhikers, clean, drain, dry, that sort of thing. And that's really good advice. The only problem with a lot of that is a lot of folks don't know that it's not just the visible things that can spread invasive species. Some things like zebra mussels, um, it's not just whether you transport the mussel shell. Um, there's a microscopic early life stage of zebra mussels called a veliger. Microscopic is the key word there. If you transport any water in your boat, even, even uh, you know, paddling like this, it doesn't have to be a motorboat, you could be spreading zebra mussels. Recommended you know, treatment for any boat, you know, even a kayak, it's not just the motorboats again, is to either let it completely dry in the sun for five days before you take it in another lake where that might not be contaminated. Um, or you can use a mild bleach solution, like a you know one part bleach to 30 parts water just to wipe it off, because that will generally kill the zebra mussel villagers. Now, if the only place you paddle is someplace that already has zebra mussels, you don't really have to worry so much. It's when you're going into another body of water. We'll talk a little bit about some essential gear. Um, again, it's, it's very applicable for day trips as it is weekend trips. Pots and pan sets. This is a really nice set because it has a little pan and multiple containers in it. But most important is a water filter system. This is a very nice filter. Um, I've used it for quite a few years now. I have uh, Lake Michigan, Lake Superior, and have never had a problem. Um, this part goes in the, wa in the water. And there's a float to, for a float. And then this end here has a clip on it that you can just clip it right into your bottle and fill your bottles up. A lot of times what I'll do is I'll um, make sure everything's filled up once we once we set up camp, I'll get everything filled up and ready for the next day so I don't have to mess with it at lunchtime or anything like that. The biggest part, the part that I think is most valuable, is every student the second semester has to develop an independent project, something that's going to help our local community, local environment. Well, my independent project I built, um, well, actually I got them from Barb Trombley, a loon nesting platform. We're going to take them out today. and put some vegetation on it and stuff for the loons to lay their eggs and hatch on. And there's one extra one we'll take that someone next year can have if they do the same project and then they can put another one out there. What me and my partner did is we prune the apple trees on the school's property. We worked on them from one and a half to two hours a day. We took all the stray limbs, dead limbs off to strengthen the live limbs that were on there. It will help apple production Probably within the next year, we should start seeing better apple production from our um, pruning. We use them for uh, our apple cider. The ag forestry class, they make the cider and uh, they use the trees that we prune, so hopefully we'll get a lot more apples in the upcoming years. We had a professional, Matt Watkes, come out and show us how to prune the trees and what not to cut, what to cut, everything to get, and then uh, what it should look like when we're all done. And after we learned how they're supposed to be supposed to look, then we uh, took our tools and we cut off all the dead branches, uh, all the branches that are intersecting one another, and the branches that are sticking straight up. We cut those off so that the more important branches could get uh, more light to grow the fruit. I went through our school forest trail system and I like regenerated the trails and like reestablished them. Um, some of them. We're still there, but they just needed some clearing out, and um, some of them, we found some new ones actually, and we are making signs for them. My project was uh, involving the school's ski trails. There are, um, there are some ski trails on our property that, have, that are voluntarily um, groomed throughout the winter, and then they're also like biking, snowshoeing, running trails. We're going to start using them for our cross-country teams, so they're really nice. Um, trails on our school property and um, my biggest thing that I'm doing is spreading awareness for it. Um, so I, I am making a map of the ski trail and um, including it in a brochure that's going to be distributed around the surrounding community to get more people to come and use it because they're really nice trails. Um, and then also I applied for a grant, a grant to get skis for elementary kids. And then I got in contact with 906 Outdoors to come here and do a discovering show.
as kind of like more publicity for like what the school is doing because we do so many environmental things with the school. Um, our project was building a website for the class and then we um, also took on the presentation for the entire year. So we recently did that. We gave it to all, um, the presentation to all of our donors, telling them everything that we've accomplished this year and everything. So the website's for our class and we are posting like blogs to keep everyone up to date on what our new projects are, how we're moving along, and then we're getting it linked to our school website so anyone can access it. Every student has, has these independent projects. It takes a lot of their time and effort and ultimately they're in charge of teaching that lesson to the rest of the class, or in some cases to uh, some of the middle school classes as well. It was really fun to build the boat, and then, but my favorite part was probably painting them. This is uh, a lot better than sitting in class all day, and most of the teachers are pretty cool about it, like they didn't give us a ton of homework. So um, this is definitely something that I'm going to remember always, like taking my boat out that we all built. And I think it's definitely unique because I know lots of other schools, they uh, will just build one boat, like when I've talked about it, they're like, oh, so the whole class just builds one boat, and no, we each get our own. Uh, it's a lot better than like sitting in a classroom or writing things on paper, reading things out of a book. It's more hands-on, so you, I feel like, well, I personally have like learned it more. I'll probably remember it more, and it's kind of a, it's a useful skill. I know I'll use all the other classroom skills for the rest of my life, but like this was hands-on, so you get to really get a feel for what it's like, and you know what you're doing better. And oh, it's definitely better than uh, sitting inside a classroom and. Uh, just learning from a teacher because it's a lot more hands-on and you get to be outside a lot more and uh, it, it, You learn through uh, actually doing it. So I, it's a lot better than sitting inside a classroom Yeah, that that makes it a lot better than just sitting there and watching. Mr. Bliss, he had a demo boat so he would show us um, how to do each step on the demo boat he would demonstrate it and then we'd all get to do it to our own and it was nice because we didn't all get to work on our own boats like by ourselves we all got to work together and so it was kind of nice doing that and then painting was probably the funnest because you got to design your own boat how you wanted to do it so. This school is really interesting I a bunch of my friends that were uh, took the original the like first boat natural resource and watercraft design class that was offered last year and they were so excited about it and we went on a whole bunch of uh, camping trips and stuff and boating trips after the class and they brought their wooden boats and I had my plastic one so I got shamed for it a lot and I just knew that I wanted uh, to take this class to get my own boat and then I was surprised at like how much you actually do get out of it though because I learned a whole bunch of stuff on like how to build like using different tools and stuff that I might have not have otherwise learned and um, also we learned a lot about like boat safety and different boating techniques different types of boats and then um, and then that's just in one like hour of the class and then the other part is the uh, natural resources and so that's been really cool because we live in such a like unique and like environment environmentally like focused area in the UP so it's been really cool to learn um, about the different natural resources and about uh, I don't know just all kinds of different environmental sciences and stuff. It's a really cool experience to have and it's something that we're going to take with us forever. We'll tell our grandkids that we got to build boats in class and we got to come out here and it's been really, really cool and it's something that I'm really happy that we had the opportunity for. Um, our principal superintendent always says um, we're a little school that does really big things and I think this is one of the big things. Definitely. Very grateful for it. And the two hour, it was nice being that was two yeah. hours. It was really nice. I hope this really starts something in their mind that they keep with them. You know, it's not just the boat. It's it's the whole philosophy of being out here. You, you don't need a motor. Um, you, you don't really need a, a whole lot of anything. Just get on the water, paddle around, enjoy yourself. 
Uh, if, you, if you love the area that you're living in, especially this beautiful UP country, you're going to start protecting it and you're going to start educating people about how you should treat it. Um, last year was the first year that we have done this and I received a couple letters from parents uh, talking about how their kids were enjoying their, their boats over the summer and taking them out on little excursions. And uh, I hope that really sticks with them for a long time and they pass that on down. Uh, this program, it's, it's the only one that I know of. There's various programs, like I mentioned the Champlain Discovery, in that they, it's a summer, it's a private institution, it's a summer program for kids and it's great. Uh, and there's a few schools that will build one or two boats a year as an entire class, but there's nothing like this where every student builds their own boat and, and takes it home with them in the end. Well, that's it for tonight. If you'd like to keep tabs on what's coming up on Discovering or see where we've been, go to 906outdoors.com. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next week right here on Discovering. Discovering.